Hey guys, welcome to my high level money making guide. The methods in this video are some of the best high level money makers in the game and they will be able to help you become rich. I will be including five methods in this guide, four of which will be able to make you over 10 mil per hour and the fifth method being more of an AFK method. I will have timestamps in the description so you can navigate through this guide easier. I hope you guys enjoy. Starting with our first method, we have Jad Farming, which is essentially farming wave 17 of the Zuck fight. I highly recommend using either ranged or magic. As you can see on screen, this is my range setup. There can be a few extra upgrades that you can add to this setup if you do have them. Um, but I highly recommend having at least an AoE weapon, which would be the mechanized chinchampas. For the magic setup, uh, it is fairly similar. Um, there are a lot of AoE abilities that you can use with magic, so it is a really good setup to use in order to reach wave 17. I do prefer ranged when you are at wave 17 and you're starting to actually fight the three jets. Now, to start this method, you will first need to make it to wave 17. I will be linking my full guide on how to reach 17 for the JAD farming. So that will be in the description if you guys would like to check that out. Now, in terms of farming the triple JAD wave, I recommend you guys use ranged. As you can see, when I am farming this wave, um, you will want to make sure to stand in this location right here. That way, only one of the JADs will hit you at a time. If you do have the uh, Saren God Bow, the special attack is extremely effective against JAD, so that is something that is extremely helpful. Um, but as you can see, you will want to just target one JAD at a time. Um, once you kill the second JAD, you will want to teleport out. That way you can go back to this wave when you come back in. You will also get some marks of war while you are killing these JADs, which is a pretty nice bonus. And the loot from these JADs is pretty great as well. So a JAD actually has two different drop tables. It has the common drop table, which is the table on the left. As you can see, the drops are much worse than the drop table on the right. So JAD has a higher chance of dropping items from the elite table, which is the table on the right with the uncut onyx. As you can see, you are going to be making most of the money from the large blunt or calcum salvage. Um, you will be making around 400 to 600k um, if you do happen to get this drop. Also, the onyx bolt tips, the hydric bolt tips, these are both really great drops as well. The onyx dust is a pretty good drop since it does drop a lot of onyx dust. Um, so most of these drops you are going to be making quite a bit of money off of. And based on my calculations, I was able to kill right around 82 jads in one hour. Um, so I did happen to make quite a bit of money in that hour. So looking at my loot from one hour of killing Jads, I was able to make right around 14 mil in that one hour. And I did kill 82 Jads in that hour. As you can see, most of the money came from the large blunted or calcum salvage, um, six mil just from that. I also got one onyx drop, which is just about 1.1 mil. And all of the other drops just also added up. I got some Hydric Bolt Tips, I got some Onyx Bolt Tips, um, and honestly, I don't think this chest was extremely lucky, so you should be able to expect um, making right around 14 mil per hour. Now, the next method we have is Big Game Hunter. Now, you can do the low tier Big Game Hunter and mid tier. I'm recommending doing the mid tier because it is the best GP per hour and it is quite consistent, especially when you are doing the Corbicular Rex. So uh, the requirements for the Corbicular Rex is 90 Hunter and 70 Slayer. Also recommended for Big Game Hunter in general is the Mobile Perk along with Double Surge and Bladed Dive to help with your mobility. And also the Quick Traps Unlock which does cost 50 Hunter Marks is extremely helpful. If you do have a Dwarven Chainsaw in your bank, you can use that as well. It will allow you to collect two of the logs 
um, every time. It allow you to gather double resources. So this too is quite helpful. And you can make around 12 mil per hour doing this method. Now, as I said, we're going to be focusing on the mid-tier uh, dinosaurs that we will be doing Big Game Hunter for. So, uh, specifically these three, and as you can see, I did uh, put the location to each three of these dinosaurs on screen as well. Now, the best one to do for sure is the Corbicula Rex. This one drops the uh, Corbicula Rex meat, which is worth about 290k each right now. Um, it will always drop about one or two of them, so obviously you're making 290k to 580k every uh, time you get one of these captures. Um, now, another really rare drop that you can get from the Big Game Hunter is the Dragomatic. It's worth around 19 mil right now, although the drop rate is 1 in 101. So that will obviously help out the GP per hour as well if you get one of those. Um, but uh, if you are doing these mid-tier uh, big game hunter creatures, the money is pretty consistent since they drop their uh, meat every time and it is worth quite a bit. Now, moving on to the actual big game hunter encounter, you're going to need the bait to start this encounter. You can actually store the bait in the bait box, which is super helpful. That way you won't need to bring all of the bait in your inventory and it will give you some inventory space because later on in this encounter you will be gathering some materials to actually do the encounter. So to start the encounter just go to the bait box. Um, you can start it if you have the bait in your inventory. Now when you start these encounters um, you will have uh, roughly 20 minutes to uh, capture as many of these dinosaurs as possible. Um, also when you first start you're going to want to start by gathering the resources. So you can see that I'm going to be cutting this tree for a while, um, I like filling out my full inventory with logs and then fletching approximately 9 to 12 of the spears. Um, that way you won't need to go chop down more logs later on in the encounter. I do find it just saves some time and it's the most efficient way of doing it. You'll definitely want to cut more logs than the vines, but you also do need the vines to build the scorpions. So start off the encounter by getting a bunch of the spears as well as keeping some logs in your inventory. I like keeping uh, seven or eight of them. Then you want to chop down at least three vines and then you can go ahead and start building the scorpions and the pressure plate. Now the scorpions, they cost one log and one vine to build and then the pressure plate just costs one log. Once the scorpions are built, you can arm them with spears. However, you will need to tip them with poison. So that is what these frogs are here for. You can see that there's three different colors of frogs, the yellow, red, and blue frogs. For your first encounter, you're going to want to determine which type of poison is most effective against the dinosaur. Um, so as you can see, I am testing out the yellow poison. Um, so what you're going to want to do is get two yellow poison and one red. Then when you go ahead and bait the pressure plate, you'll be able to figure out which of these poisons is most effective. So you'll be able to figure out which poison to use by looking at the chat box after you uh, first arm the scorpions and bait the pressure plate. You can see that the golden poison damage did 30,000, so we obviously know that golden is the best because 30,000 is the max hit. Now if you don't get 30,000 on either of the two poisons, you'll know that it is the third one, the one you didn't try. Um, but for this encounter, it is going to be the yellow poison. So since the dinosaur only has 15,000 health, we can only arm one scorpion and bait the pressure plate again and we'll get the kill. Now, this is where it becomes really fast. Um, since you already know the poison, the next encounter is really efficient. You'll just need to arm all of the scorpions with the golden poison or the most effective poison and you'll be able to kill the big game hunter dinosaur in one shot. If you are pretty efficient with big game hunter you should be able to complete three full dinosaur encounters in an hour so um, basically once, once you uh, kill enough of the corbicular rex it will go into hiding then you'll need to go ahead and move on to another mid tier dinosaur. Um, so it does work that way. Um, you can't consistently just camp the Corbicula Rex. You will need to move on to one of the other two that I did show you. Um, but uh, you can do this for a full hour and you should make right around 12 mil per hour just off of all of these drops. Now moving on to the next method, we have Lava Strike Worms. And this is one of my favorite money making methods in the game. And I have mentioned it before, but I am mentioning it in this video because it is even better right now. 
and that is because the searing ashes have gone through the roof. Right now they're worth over 110k each, so you can easily make 12 mil per hour at Lava Strike Worms just by killing about 80 of them per hour. Lava Strike Worms also drop another item along with the Searing Ashes, which also are priced quite high. But anyway, looking at the method, there is only one main requirement, which is 94 Slayer, so not a super high requirement, but it is fairly high at least. Um, recommended, however, is the Elite Wilderness Tasks. This is highly recommended. It will make it so the Searing Ashes are noted, and this is really helpful. Since you are going to be in the Wilderness, it's going to save you the inventory space, and it is also just a really nice quality of life thing. Um, also recommended is at least 90 plus combat. However, if you have 94 Slayer, I'm pretty sure you have a pretty good combat level. Also recommended is an Amulet of Glory or even a Wilderness Sword. This will allow you to teleport out of the Wilderness if you're uh, below thir level 30 Wilderness. So this is really helpful because the Lava Strike Worms are right around level 35 Wilderness. So you will have to walk a little bit south before you can teleport. As you can see, with my gear setup, I'm using really basic and cheap armor. I'm using Royal Dragonhide armor, but I am also bringing my Noxious Longbow. So this is a really expensive weapon, but you do always get to keep at least one weapon in the wilderness if you do have your item protection on. Um, I also like to bring a Fury Shark in case of emergencies. This will allow you to keep one extra item for one minute after eating it if you do happen to die. Um, so it will basically make it so I will always keep one item at least. So in order to get to the Lava Strike Worms, I like using the Wilderness Sword. You can teleport to the Herb Patch in the Wilderness and then you can run west um, until you reach the Lava Strike Worms. Now, as I mentioned, it is in the Wilderness. It's deep in the Wilderness as well, so you do need to keep your eye out for players. There are sometimes PKers roaming around the Lava Strike Worms since... It is a really good money maker, so they're looking to kill players who are trying to take advantage of it. That being said, from my personal experience, and I do have over 2,000 kills at these creatures, I haven't found too many PKers. You might find one every 100 kills or so, um, but it isn't a super popular area at least. So as you can see with killing the Lava Strike Worms, they are pretty simple. However, they do have this one mechanic where they, where they will go underground and they'll sort of drag you in. So this is their only mechanic. All you need to do is step out of the way. Um, otherwise, you'll take about a 4k to the face. But aside from that, the Lava Strike Worms, they are pretty easy. Um, the main thing that you should watch out for with this method is just watching for PKers, other players in the wilderness that are looking to kill you. Um, so just keep your eyes out and always look around you, you and be aware of your surroundings. If someone does start running towards you, you'll want to run away as fast as possible and try and teleport out um, if they don't teleblock you. Um, if they do teleblock you, it will be a really rough, uh, slow walk to the wilderness border. Um, but even if you do die, you should be able to keep um, your valuable items. If you don't attack them and you're not sculled, you'll keep at least three items. With your item protection, you'll keep another. Um, and as you guys can see, I'm using some really basic gear, so they won't be making much money off of me. Um, basically, they'll just get um, my food and my uh, ashes that I already got from the fight. So you won't be losing too much, um, but it will be a bit frustrating. Um, but my, as I said, in my experience, there aren't too many PKers out here. The next method is Water Fiend Binding Contracts. And this is actually a really easy method. There aren't too many requirements. The only requirement is 68 Archaeology along with the Dagon by Mystery. And that might be some of the more difficult requirements. And then the third requirement is 50 Summoning in order to make the Binding Contracts. Recommended is 90 plus ranged. You could do this method with as low as 70 ranged, but it would be a bit slower. Water Fiends is also one of the best range training methods as well. You should be able to get anywhere from around 500k XP per hour or higher. So it is awesome to train your range here as well. And you can also make some pretty good GP per hour on the side. 
You can make around 15 mil per hour doing this method. However, there are a few steps to it. So we're gonna jump into the first step, which is actually making the binding contracts. Now each binding contract, as you guys can see, is made by using two Blood of Orcus and two Hellfire Metal. So you will want to create some presets um, so that you can make these binding contracts. You'll want the blue charms, um, pouches, and uh, spirit shards with you so you can make the binding contracts. Um, they cost right around 29k to make for each of these contracts. Um, but then when you go ahead and turn them into the water fiend contracts, they cost right around 57k right now. So you're going to be making about 27k profit per water fiend that you do kill and you can kill a lot of them per hour so you are going to be able to make quite a bit of GP per hour um, doing that. Uh, the only downside about it is that it does cost blue charms to make these binding contracts and blue charms they can be difficult to obtain um, so that is probably the one thing that is quite costly with this method. So the next part of this method is just going to be going to the Ancient Caverns to kill the Water Fiends. They are a pretty easy creature to kill, especially if you are using ranged. Um, and as I mentioned, you are going to be making about 25 to 27k profit for each of these kills. Um, I recommend bringing some magic note paper just so you can note the uh, binded contracts once they are made. Um, that way you can just stay here for a long period of time. Um, now, another thing about this method is that um, you can kill right around 600, maybe even 700 of these per hour. Uh, so you will want to have a lot of binding contracts made before you go here, uh, basically just depending on how long you're planning on staying. Another great thing about this method is that you also do get a lot of XP per hour. Water Fiends is actually one of the better places to train ranged, and you should be able to get around 700k ranged XP per hour doing this method as well. So if you guys aren't already 99 ranged, this might be a great money making method to help you guys get there. Now moving on to our last method, we have killing Salawa Axe. Now this is also an AFK money making method, and you will be able to make 5 mil per hour quite easily and this is off task if you are on task the gp per hour is much higher and it would be close to 10 mil per hour as for the requirements you will require 105 slayer to kill the selawa axe as well as the jack of the spades quest and the ikthren's little helper quest recommended is the vital spark drop enhancers you can purchase these from the dungeoneering shop for 1000 dungeoneering tokens they're highly recommended because they will double the vital sparks that you will be getting from the drops and right now vital sparks are worth right around 300k each so basically you're spending 1000 dungeoneering tokens for 300k also recommended is the Noxious Scythe or a Dragon Rider Lance. Uh, you'll just need a pretty solid two-hand weapon so you can use the AoE abilities with melee. And you'll also want overloads and curses. As you can see with my gear setup, I am using Masterwork with the Noxious Scythe along with Cinder Banes. And for the inventory, I have uh, basically some overloads, I have super restores, some aggression potions, and then also you will need the feather of mats in order to kill these creatures. Uh, you can see I do have the vital spark drop enhancers as well as some weapon poison and a bunch of emergency food. Salawa Axe are located in the Sophonum Slayer dungeon which means all the loot you will be obtaining from these creatures can go straight to the chest, making it so you don't have to pick up any drops. This makes the method quite AFK, and the only thing you'll really need to focus on is staying alive and making sure your health doesn't go too low. You can set up a revolution action bar similar to mine. You'll want your AoE abilities at the front, I also do recommend using the Deflect from Melee or Protect from Melee. Um, it is much better than Soul Split since these creatures do hit quite hard. And since you are using this, I do recommend having Devotion in your action bar as well. So you can use that every once in a while just to recover some health. 
You can see that I am using the Vampir Zamora. I do highly recommend this as well. Um, you will need to be restoring some health for this method, so you can use the Vampirism Aura. Alternatively, you could also use a Vampirism Scrimshaw. However, this will cut into the profits a little bit. Now, if you decide to use the Vampirism Scrimshaw, it will make the method much more AFK. Um, and you won't really have to worry about your health dropping. But aside from that, you'll just want to make sure that your aggression potion is always active and you're continuously killing the Salo Axe. When you are ready to collect the loot, just head to the chest and most of the money will be coming from those vital sparks. And as I mentioned, you will be able to make right around 5 mil per hour doing this method. I hope you guys were able to find at least one of these money making methods useful for you. Each method has their own unique requirements, but you will be able to make a lot of GP per hour from each one of them. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.